Kayla and Alex here from Tactical Response for just another Medical Monday. Uh, today, I want to go over uh, neck wounds. You can't use this on the neck. Um, there are only four places, four places on the body to put a tourniquet, and that is on your four extremities. Always go high and tight, and those are the only four places that we apply them. So what happens if you have any... Uh, involvement with the carotid or your jugular in your neck and you are having a big bleed. The first thing that you want to do is find an occlusive. I'm just going to use the plastic that come out uh, that my uh, dressing come out of. Occlusive is just a fancy word for anything that doesn't let air in and out and plastic fits that description. So if somebody has a neck wound you want to have them like hey can you hold this for me take this arm Hold that there, get your bandage. When you are ready to go, because that's putting pressure on there, it's not stopping it, but it's buying you time, which is something you don't have any extra of. So if you can make the most of the time you do have, like it's a win. <laughs> so have them take that. When you're ready to go, have them move that hand on top of their head. You put that on there. You come around under the armpit. And we're not worried about this, uh, the top of the bandage at all, like the C or the H or whatever kind of dressing you have. We are just going around and around to where it can do the pressure for us. Because something a lot of people don't really consider is that tourniquets are hands-free direct pressure. All they do is put, let me get that secured, sorry. There we go. And now you can put that arm down. All a tourniquet does is hold pressure for us without us using our hands. And it gives great compression and stops the bleeding. So this is doing the same thing. It's hands-free direct pressure. You may have more than one patient. You may still need your other hand to fight back. You may still need it to drive to the hospital. Whatever your reason is, if you don't have to keep these gummed up doing something, then you can take care of other things. So this is gonna give us that direct pressure and hopefully buy us enough time to get them to the ER. And luckily you can't put it on too tight because you still have this side open. Right. And that's why this works because uh, he's a healthcare professional. He, he works at <laughs> I shouldn't tell people where you work. <laughs> bleep that out, Shelton. <laughs> bleep that part out. You can leave this part in, but bleep out where I said he worked. Like you can even put the black box over my mouth because I don't want everybody knowing where my man works. <laughs> um, but the reason that it works is because you've got two uh, arteries and two veins going up, one on either side, and then your brain has little capillaries and blood vessels that go back and forth and let the blood move from side to side. It's a very uncommon occurrence, but I would be remiss if I didn't tell you about it. Some people don't have those, so this would not work for them. Um, if you don't get the bleeding stopped, they're going to die anyways. So get the bleeding stopped. It's bad guys, because they can kill you instantly. Bleeding, because it can kill you in a minute and a half, three minutes. Breathing, you got three to five minutes. So maybe it gets you enough time to get that person to the hospital. But for 99% of the population, they're still going to have everything that they need uh, working on because of the one side still being open. So. Alrighty. Whew. Remember, guys, your responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends.